The greatest commandment. The greatest commandment. Now, the question that Jesus was asked came from someone called a scribe. Does any of you children know what a scribe is? Yeah. What I got from that was a scribe is someone in a particular uh, religious tradition who writes down the traditions of that religion and makes sure everybody knows it. Is that right? Yeah, brilliant, fantastic. Give another clap. Uh, Encyclopedia Britannica, if you're watching today, you've got another member to join your committee. That's really wonderful, thank you. Um, yes, we say scribble, don't we? That's the word that also comes, scribe, scribble. It's someone who writes down the traditions and keeps the traditions of the law. So Jesus was asked a question by a scribe, a very important religious man of part of the Jewish faith. And scribes were considered to be the experts. I don't know about you, but when I hear the word expert these days, I get a bit nervous. Do you? There's so many experts about everything, aren't there? I remember once we had someone came to do a first aid course here at the church, and they taught us how to do first aid because they were an expert and they got a certificate. But afterwards I said to him, have you ever used first aid in real life? And he said, no, never. He never done CPR on anyone, never put a bandage on anyone, but he teaches everyone to do it because he's an expert and he has a certificate. So I get a bit nervous about experts when I hear that word. So the scribes were considered to be the experts when it came to interpreting the Jewish law, the Torah, the commands of God to the people. And by this time, do you know how many commandments Moses, uh, God gave to Moses? Ten, yes, thank you for that, yes. <laughs> now the, the scribes and the Pharisees had taken those ten commandments and they'd expanded them to all kinds of rules and regulations. Uh, anyone know how many rules and regulations they'd expanded the ten commandments to by the time Jesus uh, Kate left this earth. Any idea how many command, how many, we'll try a young person first and then we'll try Beverly who's a little bit older than young, but any young people know how many? Okay, go for it Beverly. 613 rules and regulations. So if you want to be a good Jew, you've got to know all the 613 rules and regulations. I wonder how many you know. 613. It was virtually impossible for people to keep them because they didn't even know what most of them were. 613 rules and regulations. They'd expanded it too. A scribe could rule on whether it was breaking God's law to go and fetch water on the Sabbath day. A scribe could tell you whether it was legal or illegal according to Jewish law to sew a button on that had fallen off on the Sabbath day. That's interesting, isn't it? Or light a fire if it was cold on the Sabbath day. They could say whether it was acceptable to God or not. And a whole lot of other things about carrying chickens on the Sabbath and whether your donkey was fallen down a well, what kind of knot you did on the string to pull him out. If you did the wrong kind of knot, you were breaking the Sabbath. If you did the right kind of knot, it was okay. Because one kind of knot was a, a working knot. You're not allowed to work on this. And so it goes on and on and on. 613 rules and regulations. So they were the experts. And so this uh, expert scribe comes up to Jesus and they're trying to catch him out because they don't know who he really is. They don't believe his credentials, that he came from God. And so the expert comes up and he says, teacher, he's polite. Rabbi, teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? So what was Jesus going to answer? Would he choose one of the ten commandments given by God to Moses? And if so, which one would he choose? Would he choose the greatest commandment is do not commit adultery? Or perhaps he might choose do not kill? Or he might say... The greatest commandment is to honour your father and mother. Listen, you children, today to that one. There we go. What's he going to say? Is he going to choose one of the Ten Commandments and say it's the greatest one? Well, the scribes may have considered themselves to be the experts on God's law, but the real expert, the genuine expert, was Jesus, wasn't it? Because he was God's son, and he was with the Father when 
when those laws were brought about in the heart of God for, for our world to keep us safe, the boundaries by which we could live and rejoice and be happy and things would go well. So it would be interesting to see what he says. Well, Jesus cut through all the 613 rules and regulations, didn't even mention them, didn't say anything about sewing buttons on on the Sabbath. The greatest commandment is to whether you sew a button on with a certain kind of thread on the Sabbath. No, that was... He cut through all the 1600, the 613 rules and regulations, and he replied this, and he didn't even quote one of the Ten Commandments, which is pretty amazing, isn't it? He says, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. So never mind all the other things. If you're not doing that, you're breaking the greatest commandment of all. Some of you here are following Jesus in your life and that's your heart, your goal. It's in here. You're, you're there with God in your heart. You've given your life to Christ. He's forgiven your sin. And you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, as much as we're able to as fallen human beings. This is the first and greatest commandment. Never mind the 613. Never mind even the other nine commandments. And he says, the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. And all the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Well, that's amazing, isn't it? Everything he says, everything you need to know about what God wants us to do in our lives hangs on these two commandments. Love the Lord your God with everything that you are and love your neighbour as yourself. But this is important. The greatest command comes first. Because a lot of People in the world say the most important thing is to love one another. Well, it's really, really important. But the first thing you have to do is to love God, first of all. That's the greatest commandment, not the other way around. Have you got it? Um, because there are lots of people in the world who do good things and we praise God for them all, but they don't all love God. The greatest command, he says, it starts between you and God. The greatest command is to love the Lord your God, what does he say, with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. And Jesus, of course, was quoting from Moses, from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5, and the Jews count this very important, where it says, love, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Moses gave that to the people of his day. And this is what's right at the heart of true faith. It's what God demands above everything else in life, that we love him with our whole heart, with our soul and with our strength. Everything else that God expects and wants from us flows from that first commandment. You've got to love God first and everything else will begin to flow from that. Not the other way around. We don't just start by being nice to people. Uh, we went to a funeral not so long ago, and someone from another religion, which I won't mention because I don't want to dishonor anybody, uh, and he gave a little speech by the graveside, and he said, um, what, what God wants, and it's not the same God we're talking about here, but he said, what God wants is that you, you're nice to everyone. And that was the end of the message, you know, and... Uh, Jesus answered the question by saying, first of all, you've got to get right with God. You've got to love him with your whole heart. And everything else flows from that relationship of love with God. So if you do not keep this commandment, then nothing else matters, really. Now, Orthodox Jews, that's the ones that are very strict, even to this day, they wear things called tefillin. Now, I don't know if we've got a picture of, uh, have we got a picture there that we can show in a moment? It's, uh, anyone know what a tefillin is? Encyclopedia Britannica, do you know what a tefillin or phylactery is? No, she doesn't. Anyone know what a tefillin or phylactery is? No? Any adults know what a tefillin or a phylactery is? Oh, there we are. Look at that. It's an amazing picture. 
You can see there that on the, that young man's head is a little leather box and it's tied round his fore, onto his forehead and around his arm with a leather strap is bound another little box. Can you see it just under this part of his arm? And uh, inside that little box, and uh, they take this from Deuteronomy 6, it says, tie them on your arms and wear them on your foreheads as a reminder. Little boxes and pouches tied around the forehead and the arm to remind people what God wants most from us. Um, and inside these little boxes, what do you think it was? No, it wasn't something for lunch. Uh, they're not some sweeties that he's, he's got saved up for later. These were something far more important. Inside these little boxes were four little passages, key passages from the Torah, from the Old Testament, from the law of God. Two of them were from Exodus, the book of Exodus, and that reminded the people of what God had done for them when he set them free from slavery in Egypt. Do you remember that? What was the man's name who kept the people enslaved in Egypt? Anyone know? Pharaoh, yes, that's right. Pharaoh kept the people of God enslaved and they cried out to God and God saved them from Pharaoh in, a, in an amazing and dramatic way. And uh, that was a wonderful thing. And, and God told them to put these little passages in these boxes so they would never forget that God is our saviour and he sets us free from the power of sin and death when we put our trust in him. So inside that are two passages from Exodus and then there are two more passages and they're from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6 and chapter 11. You'll probably forget that by the time you get home, but you can look it up. And the other two scriptures from Deuteronomy, both of these were reminding all of God's people that at the heart of their faith was the command to love God and to serve him with all their heart, with all their soul, and with all their strength. And you know, oh, it's gone off now. <laughs> You know why that young man has one box just here? Anyone like to guess why he's got it there on his arm? And you see he's got it just tucked under his arm. Anyone like to guess why he's got it there? Yes? Absolutely. Brilliant answer again. Give her a clap. He wants to keep that message safe and not to be lost. And he wants to be close to God. And in fact, if you look at the picture, that little box is close to his heart, isn't it? And uh, that message there in that little box is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And so... These tefillin, these leather things, are there to remind it and keep close to your heart. That's the most important thing in life, is your relationship with God. That's wonderful, isn't it? You see, God isn't, uh, isn't really interested in the rituals we perform. Now, I said something a bit provocative recently in a funeral, whereby there are people who attend church. They come at Christmas and Easter, God bless them, and they're very welcome all, whenever people come. They were attenders. Mr. Mr. Capolio, our previous pastor Joe, he used to say there are people who are, think that they are players when in fact they're passengers on a bus. <laughs> and sometimes we think, you know when you go to a hospital and they ask you to fill in a form and it says religion, and most people in this country will, will still write C of E because they can't think of anything else to write. Well, it doesn't matter what rituals we do, whether we go to church, whether we give money, whether we do all kinds of other things. If our relationship with God is not with our whole heart, then those rituals don't matter. In fact, God told his people off a, a number of times in the Old Testament, isn't he? In Hosea chapter 6, he tells them off. Because the people then would regularly come and they'd bring animals and they'd sacrifice them to God but their hearts weren't in it. They didn't really love God at all. They just did it because it was something they had to do. 
And some people were even bringing animals that were lame that they didn't want anymore. Or, you know, a pigeon with one leg or something like that. Not the best that they could give to God, but something that they didn't want anymore. And so God says the rituals aren't, aren't of any value if you don't love God with your whole heart. So Jesus tells us that there are two great commandments. To love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. And the second is like it, love your neighbour as yourself. Now that's not just the person that lives in the house next door to you. Because one clever scribe said to him, yeah, but who is my neighbour? And at the time that meant if you were a Jewish person, if you weren't a Jew, then you weren't a neighbour to the, to the Jews. Jews thought that people who weren't Jewish were of no value at that time. Um, so he asked, the, who's my neighbour? And Jesus tells the story of the Good Samaritan, doesn't he? He says a man was, was beaten and left at the side of the road. And the, the Jewish Pharisee went past him on the other side and the scribe went past him on the other side. And the Samaritan, a non-Jew, came along, put him on his donkey, took him to a place, had his wounds bandaged. Which man is neighbour to this man who suffered? Well, the man who loved him and showed him compassion. And Jesus said, go and do what he did. Um, so love the Lord your God with all your heart and love your neighbour as yourself. Anyone who has any needs. And the second commandment doesn't come first. Jesus did not say what God wants is for you to try hard and be nice to people. That's not the first command. The first and the greatest is to love God first. And then to love your neighbour as you love yourself. Love for neighbour flows from your love for God. I'm looking at Ingrid here. She loves the children. And recently she's been standing up here every month and really enthusiastic, saying, look at our beautiful children. We want them to know Jesus. Aren't they wonderful? Um, but that flows from Ingrid's relationship with God. She loves God. She wants to serve him. So she serves others. Um, now, love your neighbour as yourself doesn't mean that, you know, you look in the mirror, you slick your hair, a bit like John Travolta in Greece, you know, and, and you think, oh, I look cool today. I know I don't, but there we are, I'm getting old. But um, that's not what it means. It means the way you look after yourself, you should want the very best for other people in the same way. So if you want to have a good meal today, make sure anyone you know that hasn't, you can help them, you can serve them. And you know, that's a wonderful thing, isn't it? If we really love God, then we will love others. It goes as a package deal. It's not a separate thing. When you love God, he puts his love in your heart, and then you have a love and compassion for other people. And God will lead you into all kinds of different areas. Now, some people, they love older people, don't they? We've got Lilith and the team who cook lunch club every week because they care about those who are shut in. They care about those who might be lonely. They care about those who could do with a jolly good meal and some fellowship every week. Um, there are those people who love children. I've never quite understood that because I'm not quite that person. I try hard and I love the children, but I couldn't work with them all the time. I'd probably end up doing things that were not acceptable. <laughs> So God didn't ask me to do that. I do love you all children, by the way, but there's a little boy in preschool, I love him to bits, and, and he sometimes has a few upsets. And I, I just hold his hand and I just love him to bits, but uh, I don't work in the preschool, but he, he just touches my heart. Uh, but of course, in the preschool, we've got Nkalumo, who I call the child whisperer, because she has such a passion and love for children you know, she brings children out who have got all kinds of issues. She just loves them. God has placed a love in her heart. For other people, it's reaching out to the neighbourhood for people who are lost without Jesus. And that's their passion that God has given them. How can I love these people into the kingdom of God? There's all kinds of ministries. You remember me saying a couple of weeks ago that it was Edmonton Baptist Church that started education in Edmonton. Not just education on the preschool back 30 years ago, but way before that, the people who started this church, they said, 
Children are not being educated by the local council. So we're going to start doing it in church. And that's when, and then the local, educa- local uh, people came up and said, we're going to do it now because you've set us a lovely example. So the local authorities started to do education. Um, the preschool people, 30 years of service. It's absolutely fantastic. And uh, every day I witness the, the work of these people loving the children and they'll do anything that these children and their families are supported and loved. And along the way, they share why they do it, because we love Jesus. I hear the song sometimes. It's great. Uh, just encourage them. There's someone else sitting here, on, on Yenyi, uh, and she, she has a, a passion to see young people educated who are struggling at school. She started her own business now, helping young people to get education who are struggling. Many of you here have wonderful ministries that have come in and through this church because you've loved the Lord your God with all your heart. And now you've, you've loved others. And I want to say God bless you, all of you in preschool. Thousand, over a thousand children. Isn't that incredible? Um, I think we ought to give them a clap for a thousand children. <laughs> My only question is, where's the men? Where's the men teachers? Why is it that we are happy to leave all our early education days to to ladies? Ladies do a fantastic job. Where's the men? Oh, well, that's ladies' business. No, it's not. It's all our business, isn't it? But praise God for the things that they do. These ministries, this wonderful ministry that we're celebrating today, is because Jesus is the center of these people's lives and they love God with their whole heart and out of that flows a love for children and their families and I can testify I see it every day sometimes I I push my door to a little bit because there's one or two noisy ones occasionally but they're children praise God so which is the greatest commandment in God's law I'm going to stop now I've spoken too long but Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. That's the first thing. All the others come later. But if you're not doing that, then you're not walking right with God. And today's a great chance to say, you've been speaking to me today, Lord, and and I want to give my life to you completely. You can do that before you leave. You can talk to anyone who's an established Christian here and say, how, how do I become a Christian today? How do I follow Christ? I want to do that too. When you get that right, God will show you all kinds of ways to love and serve others. Your way will not be my way. Your way will not be her way, etc., etc. God will give you something where you can love and serve others. That's the first and greatest commandment. The second is love your neighbour as yourself. And if you're honouring the great commandment, then all I want to say is go and do it. Serve others, love others in the name of Jesus so God himself will get the glory. Amen. Amen.